Welcome, Kamran. Uh, very happy to have you here for your first show at the Third Line Gallery. Um, the title of the show is Before Nature, I Am Both Created and Destroyed. You've not only just come for your show, you, you actually arrived to Dubai uh, three weeks ago in order to make some of the works in the show, the works behind us, uh, sort of site-specific works that you that you created uh, in your time in, in Dubai. The rain paintings uh, on the other side of the, the room were made uh, over time in Hawaii, and the sculptures, I believe, also over time are, are found um, stones and rocks and wood mm -hmm. from in and around Hawaii. So maybe we could start with with talking about a little bit about you know your process and and sure. how how you know um, how you begin working on any piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm really happy to share this work with the community and the region. And Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed planning with you over the last two years, basically. Yeah. And of course, making the work. Yeah. Um, As you mentioned, we were talking about these different elements. Yeah. Um, and the rain paintings were produced over the last 12 months or so. I work on multiple pieces at a time. And so as I was working on the rain paintings, I was working on these sculptures and kind of, right. I find that they all sort of feed into and inform right. each other. Right. So they're bits of the painting and the sculpture and vice versa. Right. Um, which is really important to me as I work. The fact that I see everything in this world as interconnected. I've been really excited to create this series here. Um, they're basically, I see them as sort of interpretations yeah. or translations, which is the title of this body, right. um, of certain stones or boulders mm -hmm. that I identify as being maybe significant or stand out to me. And how do you, how do you identify which stones or boulders? Yeah. Are you, are, is that just a... a I know a lot of your work is very intuitive, and so it's based on a, a feeling that, that you have. And is that, is that how you choose, uh, yeah. for example, for these pieces, uh -huh. how did you choose? Well, <laughs> a cool thing about these three that we see is they're all sort of um, stone formations. So one of them was like an individual stone boulder, but most of them were like At one point, it was individual stone, and it right. cracked into several fragments. Right. Quite big fragments. Okay. But sort of emerging from like gravel and rocks and right. and sand and dirt. Yeah. Um, and so, in that way, each of these stood out because it was emerging. How did you? I mean, just a little bit of describe about how you actually then made them, because you know, I think even the process of how you uh, made the translation series here behind us is really interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah. So once I find a stone that yeah. I'm drawn to, um, I will drape an unstretched piece of canvas over the stone surface. Okay. So you can kind of just imagine that. Right. Weigh it down with smaller stones. Okay. And I kind of just sit there and feel the stone through the canvas. Okay. And in a way, um, the translation sort of happens because I can't see the actual Anymore. stone. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's obscured. Right. And I find that more interesting. Um, and, and you work on that with with um, oil pastels, so like it just picks up any of the yeah, they're oil yeah. they're oil sticks, so it's like wax and oil, right? Um, and they have this beautiful texture; they're really chunky and thick, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is suitable for stone. Yeah. And so I just sort of feel the stone and run it um, around. The yeah, region. trace yeah. trace significant formations or textures or the spaces between. You know, maybe two stones. And are you incorporating some of the elements of like, because I know in some of your works you let, you incorporate sort of like the natural elements of like, like in the rain paintings. Uh -huh. um, they get rained on actually totally. as yeah. well. But did you, is there you know, also <laughs> bits of yeah. the wadi in here? Of course, if you look close. Yeah. And that's not contrived, yeah. you know, I didn't plan yeah. that. But of course, dust blows and this right. is wet paint. Right. Especially on this one, you can see a whole bunch of dust. And right. I love that. So each of these rain paintings were as I mentioned, kind of evolved over 12 months. Some of them took an hour to make. Some so, of them took so 12 you, months. <laughs> did you actually start to work on the on the, the canvases and then you leave them outside or, and then you worked on them again afterwards? Right. So that, that's the, but some of them are more, you can see like maybe 
you can see more rain. Yeah. In them. And then, yeah. and, and again, are these these are I guess water based with acrylic um, yeah. on canvas. Oh, is it inks? Sorry, did I get no, it? No, you're right. It's, it's acrylic, yeah. watercolor. Okay. There's some India ink. Right. Um, those are the three. The indigo, indigo. pigment mixed right. with water. Those right. are like the four. Right. Here. I mean, I wonder because you live in Hawaii, which is so beautiful. I mean, you're, you're born in Minnesota, you grew up in Hawaii, and you're uh, half Norwegian, half Iranian. So there's a lot. There's a lot going on in your in your in your own, you know, like you know, makeup as a as mm. a you know, and and many different, um, let's say, ancestries or you know, um, and and different landscapes also. Mm -hmm. But do you think living in Hawaii has influenced your work in the sense that there is you're always surrounded by this incredible nature and volcanoes and zones, or, or, or is it, you know, or yeah, how, how has that come to be? It, it has certainly informed and influenced my work, yeah. um, just being there, observing and yeah. uh, soaking it in. But as you mentioned, coming from kind of a mixed background, yeah. very far away from those exactly. two like cultural centers. Right. You're not near Norway nor <laughs> Iran. <laughs> no, and I've never been to either one. And that's one reason why I'm so drawn to stone and rain right. and these natural forces right. is because that's a place or a moment where I can belong. Right. And it almost, what I'm realizing, you know, working yeah. here, it almost doesn't matter where I am. If right. I can access that energy, yeah. then I can belong. Right. You know, then I can kind of be at rest or, right. or find a sense of place. Let's talk a little bit about the stones actually, because that's also interesting how you go about choosing the stones and then obviously also then what happens with each stone has a different, you know, like a color or ink or like, or actually you've carved into it in a different way. And how does that, how does that happen? Yeah, let's talk about the stones. Yeah, it's pretty similar to my process with right. these stone paintings. Um, it's really a conversation. Right. It's kind of me listening and observing. Right. And then once I begin working, that's sort of me not talking back, but working yeah. with what it's I observe. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. Yeah. You also made a, a stone sculpture here in, in Dubai mm -hmm. on, on this three-week trip. So these were made in Wadi Shoka and then the stone sculpture. So let's talk about that. And I know it's almost finished. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's finished, but it's almost installed. It will right. be installed in Al-Sirkal in the, in the yard there, mm -hmm. in the beautiful spot I heard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so that piece kind of connects to another aspect of my heritage and kind of my investigation of living in this world. Right. Um, it's partially inspired by this standing pillar mm -hmm. at the Palace of Cyrus in Iran, um, oh. Pasagra, Pasargare. Pasargad. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, so it's a so beautiful you saw a picture of it. And you, yeah. I mean, I've never yeah. been there. Right. But have you been there? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. I, I want to go now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, outside of Shiraz. Okay. And. Anyway, it's just beautiful. It's this one pillar and yeah. there's, you know, all around it is rubble and ruins. Right. And on the pillar, it looks like a modern sculpture. Just the way it, it's standing and it's white limestone. Right. And it has carved in um, a little in cuneiform, you oh, know, wow. script. Right. And it says something like, I'm Cyrus. And so 25 or 2,500 years later, it's still standing. And that's really interesting to me, the persistence of certain materials and also, um, you know some of the things that we do in this world, yeah. how they can they can last or not, right? Um, and so juxtaposed with Dubai, right. which is a very recent, a new city, uh, yeah. new city. It's yeah. it's it's growing. It's, yeah. it's still not. You know, it's yeah, it's true. Yeah. And it's it's like literally growing before your eyes, right? Right. So it's a city of progress, modernity, right. um, and so to think about this region, yeah. You know, some of the oldest structures ever built. Oh, the history we, of the yeah. earth or in this area yeah you know and in this region yeah in the yeah. region yeah so using the material that those people use yeah limestone right which is a big one right. that's the material that this sculpture is and so it's it's sort of my way of connecting to that tradition 